What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So, in this video, I want to talk about some of the players who played. Um, some of the some of the great defensive players who played in the NBA before the 1980s. Um, and, and the reason why I say the 1980s is because it was in 1982, I think it was, that we first saw the Defensive Player of the Year award instituted in the NBA. And that's all fine and dandy. However, I get irritated when I see people say, well, you know, such and such won uh, two Defensive Player of the Year awards while this guy was never awarded that. But then they leave out the fact that the award didn't exist when that player played. You know, a little trick some, sometimes some people use when they're uh, biased for a certain player. They're trying to present an argument making another guy look bad. So what would it look like if they have had, you know, all defensive teams, you know, before 1969 and the Defensive Player of the Year Award before 1982? Like, how would it look, you know, going back at least to 19, let's say 1959? Uh, well, actually, going back to when Bill Russell first started playing, I think that's more fair. How would it look? Well, it's hard to say for certainty because you got to factor in certain things. The fatigue factor. You know, you could actually vote for LeBron James or Steph Curry or whoever, MVP every goddamn year. Now Giannis, but there's sometimes a fatigue factor comes into play. There was definitely a fatigue factor by 1993 when it came to Michael Jordan, voting him MVP every year. Same thing with Larry Bird, who won it three years in a row. Um, so there's that. And then you, it, it's just hard to quantify every year and say who would have won it for sure. So the best you can do is guesstimate. There's footage out there of, you know, Bill uh, Bill Russell blocking shots. Uh, there's footage out there of, you know, Wilt blocking shots and, you know, um, you know, guys getting steals and other great defensive plays, you know, big moments. John Havacek, the big steal, always with dramatic music. The, 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 you know, the footage slowed down, so for dramatic purposes. But, you know, some people actually think these guys were moving in slow motion in real life because they have the, IQ of a tadpole, but let's look at this. Okay, uh, let's just go with the, the main guy here, okay? Bill Russell, played from 1956 to 1969, 11 NBA championships. Um, the last year he played in the NBA, 35 years of age, was on the all-defensive first team. How many all-defensive first teams would Bill Russell have been a part of? Man, it's hard to argue that he wouldn't have been on all of them. I mean, it's because the record is nine. The record is nine shared by what? Mike, Jordan, Kobe, Garnett, I think. Maybe Duncan. I think they were on nine. It's hard for me to see. Russell not being on all 13, all defensive first team. Um, maybe, maybe on a down year, you could argue Wilt making a couple of appearances on the all defensive first team when Bill Russell was playing. But the preeminent defensive player in the NBA was Bill Russell. So I'll just say between 11 and 13, all defensive first teams. Defensive player of the years, if they were around back then, a minimum of eight. Because there is that that fatigue factor I talk about. But it's, you know, it's difficult to say who else was, was out there. Um, I'll put it to you like this. <clears throat> if I had to just guess... I would say 
he would have won it 11 times. Well, let me think about this. Let me think about this. I would say he probably would have won it 10 times. I think he would have won the defensive player of the year 10 times. I think the three years that he wouldn't have won it would have been Wilt's rookie year when everybody would, would have been just so awestruck by his numbers. Plus, Wilt had unfathomable, unfathomable block totals if they actually counted them. Double-digit blocks per game. That coupled with this is overall presence. You know, this rookie is just destroying the game, rewriting the record books. I think they would have given him the Defensive Player of the Year award just off of that, his rookie year. 55 rebounds in one one game. Yeah, that would have given it to him that year. I think another year Wilt probably would have won Defensive Player of the Year is the year that he ultimately won his first title in 1966-67 when Wilt uh, changed his game, got those triple doubles, uh, focused on being a more complete player, uh, ultimately beating Bill Russell, uh, Celtics in the playoffs. The only year that Bill Russell Celtics did not make it to the finals, I think they would have given it to him that year. And I think the other year that Bill Russell probably wouldn't have won that award would have been his last year. I think they would have given it to the Wonder Kid, uh, the Rookie of the Year, and the MVP, Wes Unsell. I think Wes Unsell possibly would have won Defensive Player of the Year that year, all right? So, you know, that's how I kind of look at that with the 60s. The 70s, man, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, I'm going to tell you something that's amazing to me. What's amazing to me is how quickly John Havacek is becoming underrated as a basketball player. You know, a lot of people have Scottie Pippen as the GOAT small forward, right? But I think a lot of us will admit that Scottie Pippen started breaking down after age 30, right? Scottie won six championships, great defensive player, right? But... John Habercheck played at a very high level for a very long time. Remember, he retired in 1978 when he was, what, 37, 38 years old? Um, he was all-NBA defensive first team for five years in a row, I think 1971 to 76, which was well after he, he was 30 into his mid to late 30s, which is unusual for a player in that era. So when Scotty was falling apart, John Havacek was, was still a strong, all-star, perennial, you know, type player, man. Um, of course, he had that the, the, one of the greatest steals ever against Wilt's... Um, was it against the Sixers or the Warriors? I think it was this. I think what was with the. I think what was with the Sixers by then. I think. But anyway, sometimes I forget a little bit uh, the, the team what was on. But that highlight of John Havacek still in the ball. Yeah, he was on the Sixers because uh, how Greer inbounded it. But um. I can see John Havacek winning some Defensive Player of the Year awards. Um, definitely, you know, even more all defensive teams going before 69. Some other guys that probably would have won some Defensive Player of the Year awards, possibly. You got to look at a guy like um, toward the late 70s, maybe 79, 80. Just throwing this out there. Maybe Michael Ray Richardson. Um, because I think for much of the early NBA, it was a probably a, a prejudice toward giving an award toward big men. Uh, Dave Cowan was another guy that would have possibly been a candidate some of those years in the 1970s. But I think by the late 70s, you'd have seen more perimeter players being added to that 
uh, to that uh, list of guys who could have won an award. Um, but in the seventies, man, I generally I generally see guys like John Havlicek, Wes Unseld, uh, later, like I said, later seventies, maybe Michael Ray Richardson. Um, trying to think I'm forgetting anybody. Nate Thurman. Most definitely Nate Thurman was a guy who I think could have won an award maybe once. Another guy who I think possibly could have won an award in the mid-70s at some point, maybe 74, 75, Norm Van Leer. You know, that's a guy that could have won an award. So that's kind of how I see it, man. With that, it's not like a lot of footage, especially in the 60s. But you have to kind of go off the, the players' reputations, um, what they meant to their teams, what they contributed to the teams. Um, but those are some of the guys that pop up in my mind as potential defensive player of the year award winners, if that award existed. But tell me what you guys think.